Welcome back to the Transhumanism Tech Channel. I'm Elise Sue, and today we're talking about brain computer interfaces, otherwise known as BCI, and how Neuralink and Kernel will help us transcend limitations of human biology. Let's take a look at why. Firstly, many futurists and transhumanists believe that in order for people to remain relevant, we must merge with machines. But first, who are Neuralink and Kernel? Well, Neuralink is a brain-computer interface company founded by Elon Musk that makes brain implants that connect a computer directly with a brain. Kernel was founded by Brian Johnson, who also co-founded Braintree. Kernel makes non-invasive BCI technology. And funnily enough, they both co-founded online payment companies before going on to found BCI companies. Elon Musk has long said humans need to become cyborgs to survive. He tweeted, if you can't beat them, join them. And he is enabling humans to do this through Neuralink's devices. When, you, when Musk revealed Neuralink at the launch event, he hyped the technology as the answer to the threat of artificial intelligence, which he said presented an existential risk to humans. Musk hopes that the technology will become commonplace, turning humans into cyborg beings that can achieve a symbiosis with artificial intelligence, something he believes will be essential to the survival of our species. He revealed an update on the latest developments will be given at the end of August, and Kernel is slightly less about the whole existential threat crisis, but that's not to say that one day their technology won't be helping people stay relevant and competitive as well. If you're interested in transhumanism, we've partnered with Transhuman Apparel who makes these awesome sweaters and t-shirts. So Transhuman Apparel aims to raise awareness about transhumanism. So buy a t-shirt to support them. They have a lot of really cool designs on their website. So go check them out and the link is included below. Secondly, neuroscience is becoming more accessible through as a service platforms. Kernel has developed what it calls a neuroscience as a service platform, otherwise known as NAS. This platform is enabling access to brain imaging devices and the ability to perform experiments remotely. The aim is to allow any industry or person to be able to acquire cheap, quantified, scalable and high fidelity neural data. While devices to measure data can be easily acquired, data isn't so easy to acquire. So, Kernel differs from Neuralink in that it is taking a non-invasive approach and does not use brain implants. This is a pivot from its original plans to make a brain implant. Its current technique is based on proprietary technology they developed to record brain activity to detect magnetic fields generated by activity in the brain and blood flow of the brain, otherwise known as cortical hemodynamics. The two products are called Flow and Flux, respectively. Kernel's solution may enable scientific research to be conducted in more natural environments and settings versus equipment rooms in laboratories. The concept of NAS is similar to the concept of software as a service, which you may already be familiar with. So essentially, it's decentralized cloud-based computing where a third-party provider hosts applications that customers access over the internet, enabling customers to focus on their domain expertise instead of running data centers and tech stacks. In the case of NAS, Kernel offers an alternative for research organizations without the complexities and costs of running room size equipment for measuring, recording and interpreting brain signals. All this is really expensive. One aim of NAS is to create an ecosystem for compounded closed loop human improvement based on a person's neuro creating a full description of a person's cognition, emotion and behaviour mapped to the genome. So this is pretty interesting stuff. Brian Johnson, Kernel's founder, says he wants to do with the brain and mind what has been done with computers and genome sequencing. That is, he wants to make it cheaper, more powerful and more accessible. And recently, Kernel closed the $53 million round of funding to continue developing their platform. And check out these masks as well. They have awesome unique designs that are designed by independent transhumanist artists. 
These are non-medical face masks that help you express yourself even if you can't show your face and are particularly great when you need to wear face coverings in public where social distancing is difficult such as in grocery stores and pharmacies. And best of all, they're washable made of two layers and available in adult, teen and kid sizes for every kind of face. Thirdly, Neuralink could give us world first BCI devices that are truly wearable and scalable. Neuralink's chip called the N1 is tiny at four millimeters on each side. It is smaller than your nail. This chip is implanted into the skull. The wires that attach to the chip are thinner than human hair. These wires are used to connect the chip with your brain and the threads are placed close to important parts of the brain and detect messages as they are relayed between neurons, recording each impulse and then stimulating their own. The neurons then connect to form a large network through synapses and at these connection points, neurons communicate with each other using chemical signals called neurotransmitters, which are released in response to an electrical spike. The N1 is able to connect with a thousand different brain cells and a person might have as many as 10 N1 chips implanted. The chips then connect wirelessly through a wearable device that hooks over the user's ear like a hearing aid and contains a Bluetooth radio and a battery. The implant works by recording information emitted by neurons in the brain. They say the first devices will be implanted via traditional neurosurgery, but eventually the chips will be inserted safely and virtually painlessly through small incisions by a robot surgeon or by a nanobot. Currently, the operation requires drilling holes into the patient's skull to implant the threads. In the future, however, they hope to use a laser beam to pierce the skull with a series of tiny holes, which wouldn't be felt by the patient. It would be like getting laser eye surgery. In his last update, Musk announced that they were able to successfully implant a device in a monkey and that monkey has been able to control a computer with its brain. However, one thing that could set it back could be regulation. As Musk has said, gaining approval from the FDA is quite difficult. Fourthly, BCI technology will allow us to enhance or replace lost brain function. BCI can help with neurological disorders which are rooted in the inability of the brain to connect with nerves around the body. These include Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, epilepsy and also paraplegia and quadriplegia following injuries to spinal nerves. Neuralink's first target is medical assistance and helping with dire brain injuries is their first priority. The first patients will be those with quadriplegia from spinal cord injuries. These patients will have four chips implanted, connecting with up to 4,000 different neurons. Of course, if you're interested in other types of tech, click on these videos. The benefits could extend beyond the disabled. Musk has talked about how Neuralink technology could be used to rewire parts of the brain responsible for causing addiction or depression. Musk has even gone so far to say that the chip could potentially be used to restore eyesight, hearing and limb movement in addition to addressing diseases that affect the brain and that in principle it could fix anything that's wrong with the brain. But it's yet to be seen how that could work. Kernel says its data can be used for a number of things, including the discovery of biomarkers of cognition and brain health, improvement of AI such as computer vision, translation and natural language processing, or any other areas in which the human brain remains the gold standard. It could even give insight into population level neuroscience driving consumer or social preferences or choice. It can even be used in consumer grade brain computer interfaces. So the possibilities are almost endless. If you're interested in other transhumanism videos, click here or here and keep a lookout for the upcoming announcement from Neuralink at the end of August. If you want to hear more about the latest Neuralink developments or about transhumanism tech, make sure you subscribe and like this video.